How's everybody doing today? Jason from Toadstool Gardens and today we are going to be harvesting some sweet potatoes and I'm also going to show you how to cure them so you get that extra super duper sweet taste. Let's go! Alright, so I'm going to show you guys my sweet potatoes that are on trellises here in the greenhouse. But these are not the ones we are going to be harvesting today. Ooh, look at that. We even got a pretty flower up there. Now I've got two different varieties of sweet potatoes in here. But if you let them go, they will definitely just keep going. You can see it's going right in the outside of my bed here. And even if you leave them on the ground, you can see right there, they will start to root in just right off the vine. They're very prolific. So I'm going to leave these for probably a month or so. It's only early October here. So we got, well, outside growing season is almost done. Inside the greenhouse, I got at least a month and a half left or so. So let's head outside. Check them out. All right, we're out here at my sweet potato bed that apparently the deer got after last night because these guys were looking perfect yesterday. Yeah, they must be getting hungry. So it's definitely uh, time to clip these vines back because tonight we are supposed to get a light frost and you actually want to leave your sweet potatoes in the ground until you get a light frost but before a heavy frost to make to get them to be absolutely sweet as possible and if we scoot down here and look at this mound where one of the main plants comes out you can see the sweet potatoes down here on the mound now you don't want to if you ever see that in the still growing season you want to cover those up because you don't want those to be exposed to sunlight or even air but first step is we're going to clip back some of these vines and then we're going to wait till we get our nice light frost tonight and tomorrow we will dig them up and I'll show you how to cure them. See you in a minute. All right, let's clip some of these vines back. I'm going to show you the clipper I'm using. It's a Corona. I love this thing because it has an internal spring, so you don't have to worry about the spring popping out on you. These are definitely worth the investment. All right, let's get some of these guys clipped. Ooh, we even got a couple flowers down here. Pretty, pretty. All right. All right, so you want to start by finding some of your vines and basically finding where the base of the plant is. You don't want to cut these things all the way back. I usually like to leave just a little bit of foliage so the frost can affect it a little more. But also now is a good time to start taking cuttings for slips. You basically just want to cut this thing all the way back until there's only a few leaves on it even if they're in rough shape. And you just want to stick that thing right into the water. You'll have roots probably within a week if you have it inside in a decently warm area. But I'm not going to keep any just because I start everything from actual sweet potatoes early on. Like I'll start them in uh, February or so. foot and a half and 
Now these, this whole bed is Georgia Jet, which is about a 100 day sweet potato, depending, 110. But it's definitely the best choice for up here in cold climates like Minnesota because the plants grow like crazy and they seem to love the hot weather but they also don't mind like 70 75 degrees and they'll keep growing like crazy these produce huge potatoes I don't know what we're gonna get out of this bed because these were planted kind of late I think I got these in like the end of July I got another video on that if you want to check that out how to plant them and another video on how to start the slips early early spring late winter that's looking a lot better Careful, you step in and around them. You don't want to smash the potato down. Throw all the cuttings in a pile, and I'm sure the deer will hit them tonight if they were up here last night. All right, that's looking a lot better. So we got them fairly thinned out. You can see the bulges from the potatoes pushing up the, pushing up the soil. Yeah, right there, some more. Yeah, more potatoes right under there, all right. Okay, we're gonna leave this until tomorrow. We'll let the frost have its effect tonight. And then we'll come back tomorrow. We'll dig them and we'll cure them. See you tomorrow. Well, you can see that we've had a few frosts and then a lot of rain. So these sweet potatoes, there's almost nothing left of the vines. You can see them popping through there. So let's see what they look like after only about 65, 70 days or so. Well, before we get started, I gotta show you guys this black hornworm that was just crawling around. Look at the horn on that guy. That will destroy a garden. He's probably looking to hibernate. Cause that's a, I'm pretty sure that's a sphinx moth. So let's go find a place for him in the wood pile and do a little digging. So, this is my window to get these out of this bed because we're supposed to get a ton more rain like the next five days. So let's dig this first one up and see what we get. Now you don't want to be right on top of the, the potato, you want to be back just a little bit. So you're not slicing them. A lot of times they'll come right up with just the plant. Okay, we got, we got some decent sizers in there. That was actually better than I was expecting. So not bad at all on the first plant. That little churn. We'll do the next one here. And you can usually loosen it from the bottom and just grab the plant. And as long as those vines, I mean, these are, these are pretty dead, but a lot of times 
like I just show you that when they stay intact they'll just pull the a whole lot of them up right there just a big old jumble on that one I've got these planted roughly a foot and a half apart. I get every little potato. Take that and throw it in the compost. Terrible though. Didn't have a great growing season, and these were only in here for about 65 days. So anything I can get is good. Yeah, a little muddy. It's all right. We're getting them out. Get some left around that one. No. Nope. All right, let's go to this next one. There we go. That one's a little better. Now, if you're in a warmer climate and you get these planted like way earlier than I did, you're going to have a nice harvest. I mean, even here in Minnesota, if you can get your sweet potatoes planted, you know, end of May or even mid-May, that would be awesome. But most of the time, I don't even get to plant outside until almost June, just because sometimes we have that late frost which is not great, but okay. Smaller amount, not terrible though. See that one? No. Readjust just a hair here. Another decent handful. Now when they when they all grow right together like that, that usually means that they were starting to develop inside the transplant pot before he transplanted them. And I probably didn't loosen the roots quite enough when I transplanted them. Cover those worms back up. Couple more plants to go here.
Now just remember when you're buying sweet potatoes, sweet potato plants, you know, the starts in the spring, make sure you're buying actual sweet potato plants and not sweet potato vine. Because the sweet potato vine, they will grow sweet potatoes pretty much like these, but they, they taste absolutely horrible. I've tried them on several occasions. Alright, good handful out of those few plants. Grab these last couple. That looks pretty good. Cover up those worms. All right, let's go to the next step. Let's cure them. So you can see I got my pail here. We didn't get a ton, but I'd say there's a good, probably 10, 15 pounds here. A lot of them look like that. Clean them up cut the strings off they'll be yummy all right let's go uh, cure these all right welcome back I'm down in my grow room and this is where I'm gonna cure my sweet potatoes you want to make sure you have a relatively warm area with not a lot of wind. So, down in my grow room, I like to cure my sweet potatoes down here because I can control the temperature and the airflow and the humidity. So what you want to do is, we're just going to dump these guys out right on the table. Now. After you harvest, you do not want to wash your sweet potatoes. You just want to leave the dirt on there. That's going to help the curing process. A lot of these dangly stems, though, you can pop off. But like some of these roots, I recommend you leaving them. It's going to help the curing process. Just leaving that soil on there is not only going to promote it, the, the sweet potato to last longer, but it's going to help heal any scars or bruises and stuff that may have happened to the sweet potato along the growth spurt. I see uh, that one's got a huge split in it right there. Probably just because we've had a ton of rain the last two weeks or so. And also leaving that soil on there until they're completely cured is going to help ward off some diseases that may still be in the potato or may creep into the potato during the uh, curing process. See, here's, here's another one, pretty split up. Now, it, it, it's about oh, 81, 82 degrees in my grow room, and you wanna shoot for right around that 78 to 85 degrees, and. And you want it consistent too. You, you don't want it to be dropping temperature and then getting warmer and cooling down, getting warmer. You want a nice steady temp, 78 to 85. The just the, the the lower the temperature under 80 degrees, just the longer it's gonna take. So at 82 to 85 degrees, these are all gonna cure in about five to seven days. You have a lower temperature, you know, it's gonna take a little longer, you know, if you, if you're right around Room temperature, like 70 to 75, it's probably gonna take a couple weeks. They're not gonna last quite as long in storage and they won't be quite as sweet if you if you don't have that nice, consistent, warm temperature. You also want your humidity to be as high as, you know, pretty much possible, right? Anywhere from the, the 70 to 90% humidity for curing is best. Now I showed you my fish tank going down here, my little pond and my uh, overwintering fish. Now just with that water running right there, the humidity stays pretty nice in here. Uh, but if it drops, I'll just come in with a uh, like a spray bottle with bottled water and 
spray all around the grow room and that you know a couple times a day and that'll help increase the humidity just don't directly spray the potatoes you know don't you know get them wet after you harvest so you want them separated enough so air can get in between them but you don't want to put a fan on them and you don't want like uh heavy airflow flowing through the room um, a little bit of airflow is okay, but you don't want, you know, like a, a heavy fan going. These guys that are all stuck together, it's just best to leave them stuck together so you don't create a wound. Now if they pop off easily and they don't damage the big part of the potato, it's all good. Well, that's looking pretty good. Now you just just leave them there for five to seven days, five to ten days, whatever you're working with with your temperature and your humidity. And after they're completely dry and the curing process is done, if you do it around 80 degrees, they should last four to six months in storage without a problem. But after they're done curing, you want to go ahead and pick them up individually and just kind of wipe wipe all that dirt off. You, it's not recommended that you wash it, but once the dirt is dry, it should wipe off pretty good. And then you want to wash them right before you eat them. Now this variety is Georgia Jet. It's one of the better varieties for growing in cold climates or just all around. It's one of the it's it's very popular in the grocery stores. It's usually the uh, if your grocery store carries sweet potatoes, this is probably one of the varieties it carries. But yeah, check out my other video. Well, my other yeah my other video on how to make the slips and how to how to plant. And you too can grow sweet potatoes. Pretty much anywhere. Now I'll be harvesting some uh, red garnets out of my greenhouse probably in a couple weeks here. So I'll maybe do an add-on video or something and see how that goes. But not too bad for not being in the ground very long and having a lot of overcast days, that's for sure. And no rain. Make sure you got those temperatures up. Minimal airflow and lots of humidity. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video or you learned something. Subscribe to all my or subscribe to my channel so you can see all my videos. And thank you for watching. Until next time, it's Jason with Toadstool Gordons. Happy growing. Mm -hmm.